products in your house do you think involve toxic chemicals? The answer may be greater than what you think. Sure, there are obvious products like household cleaners, bug spray, and paint, but almost all industries, either directly or indirectly, release toxins into the environment. Things like paper, cement, and even pharmaceuticals, mundane items in our everyday lives, contribute to the vast amount of pollution from industries every year. This means that most products we produce contaminate the environment, or are contaminated themselves. We need to realize the extreme danger that we are putting both ourselves and nature in, and rethink the way we generate our goods. The amount of toxins that we dump into our environment is staggering. At this point, the Environmental Protection Agency monitors over 600 toxic chemicals. With so many chemicals floating around, it's easy to imagine the problems we can and will face if conditions don't improve. We can make ourselves sick, force a species to extinction, or even ruin our planet and its resources. To fully understand the consequences, we need to look to both the past and the future possibilities. We are the stewards of nature. We should be trying to preserve it, not letting it slip into decay and destruction. And yet, we dump more and more junk into the environment each year. These actions can and do have serious consequences. After decades of excessively polluting Lake Erie, dumping an especially large amount of phosphorus into its waters, life had dwindled to an alarming state. Algae had taken over most of the lake, causing plants to die and decompose, choking out oxygen and, consequently, many native species. Today, phosphorus levels are below the maximum allowed, but the damage is still evident. In another close call, bald eagles came dangerously close to extinction in the not-so-distant past. Toxins such as DDT, DDE, PCBs, mercury, and dioxin threatened the reproduction and survival of the entire species. While eagles are now making steady progress towards recovery, it is still an important lesson. If we pollute our environment, we risk much more than we often realize. We're jeopardizing our own health as well. By letting toxins seep into our environment, we constantly put ourselves in harm's way. Some toxins are directly toxic to living tissues, and we can all be exposed in a variety of ways. By breathing contaminated air or drinking polluted water, we can consume carcinogens or cause damage to our nervous systems from plasticizers. And while many areas are tested for pollutants, this doesn't prevent all contact with them. We also ingest toxins through our food. Every hand or machine that touches food products we use could add more chemicals to it. This is why unprocessed foods are the healthiest and why everyone needs to wash their fruits and vegetables before they eat them. Finally, we can absorb them into our skin that's the reason for animal testing. We are so afraid of what we could be creating to use on our skin that we go to extreme measures, figuring that if it doesn't hurt them, it won't hurt us. This logic is faulty, however. For instance, chocolate is toxic to dogs, but not to humans. Even when we actually try to take responsibility for our own safety, there seem to be a lot of holes in the plan. If we don't take control of the situation now, there's a chance that we could never fully recover. Let us take into account some previous events. In 1984, a cloud of methyl isocyanate killed thousands of people in Bhopal, India. This was just an isolated incident, but it was still amazingly damaging. If we allow things to get worse, more incidents like this could pop up all over the earth. Then, there's the dangerous process of biomagnification. During biomagnification, the lowest levels of consumers eat a certain amount of something. In this case, the something is toxic chemicals. The next level consumes these organisms, thus gaining a greater amount of chemicals. This continues up the food chain until the highest level of consumers is reached, which is, more often than not, us. This is especially dangerous when dealing with chemicals in the environment. A prime example of how dangerous this can be is the incident in Minamata City, Japan. During the 1950s, in Minamata City, industries were dumping excess mercury into the rivers. The algae in the rivers absorbed this mercury. Then, the first level of consumers ate a lot of algae, gaining the mercury from each individual plant. The second level of consumers ate many primary consumers, and the pattern continued up to the human level, with mercury levels increasing with every step. By the time the people of Minamata City ate fish from the contaminated rivers, the amount of mercury was so great that many people got severe mercury poisoning, which led to Minamata disease. Even though the factories quit dumping mercury, it remained in the environment, and Minamata disease continues to affect people. If we are not careful, things like this could happen all over the planet. 
and threaten life as we know it. While fully reversing the effects of previous pollution will be difficult, if not impossible, there are steps that we can take that will reduce or even eliminate future contamination. Finding adequate alternatives to chemicals that we use every day, such as cleaning products, is a good start. By using safer products, we reduce both our health risks and toxins in the environment. Recycling is another important concept to consider. While it doesn't solve everything, it does reduce the amount of new materials produced, thus cutting the number of toxic chemicals being pumped into ecosystems. It could also save people a lot of money. We throw away numerous things that could be made into new items and used for a multitude of new purposes. By taking responsibility for our actions and thinking creatively, we could give Earth and ourselves a brighter, better future. Thank you.